Hello and welcome to JHEP's lesson on percentage yield. Please have a look at the relevant sections because this is going to be a long video. So, suppose that we put in uh, 0.2 moles of a reagent into a reaction. In an imaginary world, in the best world we can, we would want 0.2 moles of it to be reacted. We, want, we would want all of it to be reacted to give us a 100% percentage yield. We want every single bit of those reagents reacting together to form our wanted product. But that doesn't happen. In real life, just in real life, it just does not happen. Because due to the things on the right hand side of the page, we usually, in industry as well, we are putting 0.2 moles of reagents in, but only get out 0.1 moles of our products that we want or we might get 0.015 or we might get 0.005 moles it's very 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 difficult to achieve the maximum that we can get and to calculate the percentage yield we will need to find out the maximum amount of moles that we can produce in this case is 0.2 and we need to find the actual amount of moles that we've produced which is 0.1 and divide them against each other oh and times it by 100 because it's percentage to give us our percentage yield in this case it is 50 percent now the thing is although i didn't say it this reagent here is in excess so now let's have a look at this one over here say for example we have 0.2 moles of reagent A plus 0.3 moles of reagent B. Realistically, we would only be able to get a maximum of 0.2 moles in our reaction, in our overall reaction. Why is that? It's only because 0.2 moles can only react with 0.2 moles of this. Okay? We can't react 0.3 moles with 0.2 so say for example this is our limiting reagent if you remember in F325 if you've done that a limiting um, well in A2 anyway a limiting reagent is a substance in a chemical reaction that runs out first so before we even get before we even finish 0.3 we would have already finished 0.2 so 0.2 is the maximum moles that we can achieve okay so that's 0.2 that's our maximum or that's our theoretical that we can achieve now if we got 0.1 out of here it would make a 50 percent percentage yield so just remember the one with the smallest amount of moles will be the maximum theoretical moles that you can achieve at the end of the reaction so let's have a look at this practice example and um, this is just a uh, variant from the OCR question in page 162 I think so let's have a look at it a student prepared propantool by using an excess of a reducing agent sodium borohydrate with propanone obviously the four should be a subscript um, I couldn't do it on here the equation for this is shown below so we've got the propanone plus the reducing agent to make propanol he reacted 10.32 grams of propanone and obtained only 5.12 grams of propanol this means that we do not have a 100 percent percentage yield just saying just saying so we need to calculate the percentage yield how would we do that well, the first thing I always do is to label everything and write it down in a framework. So we know what the mass is for propanone, and that is 10.32 grams right here. Over here as well, we know the mass of this is 5.12 grams. We can find out what the molar mass is by adding together the molar mass of each element in propanone so let's do that with the calculator so 
is going to be 12 for carbon plus 3 for hydrogen plus 12 for carbon plus 16 for oxygen plus 12 for carbon plus 3 for hydrogen and we would end up with 58. Now we can find out the number of moles instinctively by dividing the, the mass by the molar mass. Okay, this is beginning of AS chemistry, so it will be 10.32, oops, 10.32 divided by 58, and we would get 0 0.178 moles. Okay, now remember this is in excess, so we don't need, really need to find out the moles for this because we will be using this as this is technically our limiting reagent. So let's have a look at this. We can also find out the molar mass of that. But before we talk about it, before we talk about the molar mass, this is our maximum amount of moles that we can achieve in this reaction. So therefore, in the equation actual over our theoretical, um, I'm, not even I'm not even drawing properly today, the theoretical would be 0 0.178, and we're going to find out what the actual is right now. So the MR of the actual is, um, of this, is it's going to be 12 plus 3 plus 12 plus 1 plus 16 plus 1 plus 12 plus 3 to make 60. And we can find out the number of moles by that by dividing 5.12 by 60 we shall make 0 0.085 oops I keep on forgetting the zero don't forget the zeros because the zero the zeros do matter so it'll be 0 0.08533333333 carry it on so this is the number of moles for our actual so if we just plug it here 0 0.085 and then just do the equation like so where we have 0 0.085 divided by 0 0.178 and then we would times it by 100 because we want to get the percentage it would make 47.75% 47.75% on to our next example this is one of those questions where you would look at it and just freak out so I want you to have a go at this uh, pause the video and play it again so we can go through it. Okay, I've just made um, question C a bit clearer. Uh, so again, you can just have a little pause and just answer that question if you don't get it. Okay, I'm going to very quickly read out the question. In the following reaction, 0 0.17 grams of P-acetaminophenol was used to react with 0 0.486 grams of acetic anhydride to produce acetaminophen and acetic acid. The product was purified and acetaminophen was extracted. The actual mass of acetaminophen produced was 0 0.198 grams. Using the information below, draw a possible deleted formula of acetaminophen. So, uh, if we just very quickly draw it, skeletal formula is the one where we don't really have um, that much C and H is shown. So this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We could put the NO2 anywhere we like. I'm going to put it here, like that. So that's question A done. Question B, calculate the percentage yield of acetaminophen. All we've got to do, like I've said before, don't be put off by the names and how wordy it looks. Remember the framework where we just put all the information we know down, which is 0 0.17 grams of P-acetaminophenol. So here we go. This mass would be 0 0.157 grams. We can find out the MR of this by uh, by doing oops by doing uh, six times twelve, which is seventy two, plus seven plus nitrogen is fourteen, plus oxygen, which is sixteen, and that would make one hundred and nine. With acetaminophen. 
we have got uh i don't know why i skipped um acetaldehyde right let's just do acetaminophen we got 0 0.198 grams so the mass is 0 0.198 again we can use we can find out the mr which is uh 12 times h which is 92 plus 9 plus 14 plus 32 because 16 times 2 is 32 and that would make oh let's let's just calculate that again so 12 times 8 is 96 no wonder it's 96 plus 9 plus 14 plus 32 there we go that makes sense 151 all right so we have got these two pieces of information let's do acetic anhydride now so let's uh, let's have a look it would be 0 0.486 and the mr will be 102 okay just based on adding all of that together so now what we've got to do is to find out which one of these reagents is the limiting reagent because remember that will be the one that will give us the maximum theoretical moles so we've got to just divide this by that 0 0.157 divided by 109 will give us 0 0.00144 this one number of moles 0 0.486 divided by 102 will give us 0 0.0048 so by so by comparing the two we can see that this this one over here is our limiting reagent and we would need to use that as our maximum theoretical moles that is produced so let's just write it here 0 0.00144 okay sometimes it's great just to write the framework like that and you'll see why it's great when we do the next question. So now we have got to find out the actual number of moles for this. All we've got to do is just divide that by that. And we would get 0 0.00131. All we've got to do is just write it here. 0 0.00131. Divide those together. Times by 100. Bob's wrong. Cool. We've got 90.97%. This is from this website over here. So have a look at that if you want to have the words, a worded way of doing it. There's also a different way of calculating percentage yields and that is through um, the theoretical mass. Again, that is, I'm just that is different examples, but this is the OCR way by doing the number of moles. So the third example, is we're going to work backwards so for the balanced equation shown below if the reaction of 88.8 .8 grams of C6H6S2 produces a 57.9% yield how many grams of SO3 would be produced please have a go at this and pause the video and play it when you feel ready to okay so what we've got to do, first things first, is to write down the information that we know. So we know that the mass of this is 88.8 .8 grams. And we know that the percentage yield is 57.9. We can work backwards from here. We know that we usually do actual uh, over theoretical times by 100 so if we just divide this by 100 we would get 0 0.579 so we know that the actual divided by theoretical equals 0 0.579 now all we've got to tackle is how we're going to find out the actual and theoretical so this is what we do instinctively we've got the mass we can find out the MR, okay, which is C6H6S2. We add them all up together, that'll make 142.2. 2. 
and instinctively again when you do m and mr we can find out the number of moles by dividing these two and we would end up with 0 0.624 now the thing i forgot to point out in the other two questions is that the reason why we only use 0 0.00144 as our maximum is because the stoichiometric relationship between them is one to one so for every mole of P amino phenol reacted, we get one mole of acetaminophen. Same thing here, where we have one mole of propanone, we would end up with one mole of pro uh, propantuol. This one is different. For every two moles of C6H6S2, four moles of SO3 comes out. So what we've got to do, we have got to multiply that by 2 okay because 2 moles times 2 makes 4 so if we just do that very quickly 0 0.624 times 2 it would end up with 1.248 and that is our theoretical 1.248 so we found out what our theoretical is we could plug it in here we could put it in our theoretical part of the equation and let's just put that here. Uh, choose a different colour. 1.248. Now, we can actually find out the actual now. We don't know what the mass is for this. But we can find out what the MR is. The MR of that is 80. And we just using this information, we would not be able to find out the moles. But we can actually do this. By, if we do maths, if we multiply 1 point, 0 0.579 by 1.248 to get rid of this on that side, um, this is this, I think it's GCSE maths. So the actual will equal, uh, let's just do that. It would eat, oh my goodness, it would equal 1.248 times 0 0.579, 0 0.7225, 0 0.722592. Okay, so that is our actual moles. So we can write it here, 0 0.723, 0 0.723. And by, we can, we can work out the mass, by doing number of moles times the molecular mass. So that is 0 0.723 times 80, and that will give us 57.84. 57.84. Now, if we round that up, that would give us 57.9 grams. And that is our answer. Okay, if you want to double check it, of course you can. Just do it the normal way that we've been doing it for question one and two. And Bob's your uncle. And that is it for this video.